I give up. I don't give up, actually, no. Blue candy colours are not for me. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would actually sit down and film a roundup of the five best and the five worst purchases from 2019. So these are only going to, going to be purchases that I made in 2019. Um, if you do like the luxury videos and you like talking about handbags or you love fashion and you aren't already subscribed then I would love if you would hit that subscribe button below and also the bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos. I upload videos on every Wednesday and every weekend. It may change when I give birth to my second child at the very beginning of May. So let's start off with the five best purchases of 2019 and I'm just going to start with the big items. Yeah, let's just do the most expensive item of 2019 and it was my Birkin 30 in Etoupe with gold hardware. This is in Togo leather and yes, this was purchased at the very, very beginning of 2019. This was an offer from um, my local Hermes store which is really hard to get bags from. Um, this is my second ever store offer and it definitely was one of my best top five purchases of 2019. I mean, when you're spending that kind of money, it really should be in the top five purchases of 2019. However, I may be biting my tongue very soon. We'll get to that later. Why it has made my top five, not only because it's a very ridiculously expensive bag and you'd want to hope that you spend that kind of money and love it, um, but because it has been so fantastic for my collection, it, it, it carries so much. It is a great mum bag, so when I'm visiting family, this is the kind of bag that I go for. When I'm going to the movies with my husband, this is the bag I go for because I can fit um, extra food in there. I can sneak food in. Anyone else do that? I do. Um, so I absolutely love this bag. It is a workhorse. It goes with everything. The color Etoupe is so easy to match. I have absolutely no problems matching this bag to any of my outfits. It is not too big. The size 30 is a perfect size. It is not too heavy. It is not too small. It is really just right. It's perfect. It fits easily in the crook of my arm, whereas um, the Birkin 25 does not fit in the crook of the arm. It is easy to hold because it is not overly heavy. You can just carry less in it. I mean, the bigger the bag, the more likely you are going to fill it up and then it becomes heavy. But I find that when I'm just carrying what I need to carry, a drink bottle, my essentials, I have no problems. I've actually taken this shopping and I've gone and carried it on the crook of my arm when I'm going to go try on clothes at Zara and I've gone all around the city to all the luxury stores and I've used this bag and it didn't bother me at all, even though it's a tote bag and not a shoulder bag. So it is absolutely fantastic and it is my number one best purchase of of 2019. Sorry to interrupt this video. I just wanted to let you guys know that my code with 7 Rue Paradise for 30 euro off any of the Hermes inserts or the book tote inserts, it is expiring soon on the 16th of March. So if you are wanting to take advantage of this offer, it is the best offer that they have had for any single insert purchase. Like you just have to buy it. You only need to buy one insert. You don't have to buy two. Um, it's for 30 euro off and my code is POF30 and it does expire soon. So if you are wanting to get one, I highly recommend them, especially for the Hermes bag. Go and watch my video where I did a comparison of the Birkin 30, what fits and what fits in the Kelly 25 using those inserts and you will see examples of um, why they are so great and why other inserts just do not meet the standards of the seven Rue Paradise inserts. So my code again, POF30, and it gets you 30 euro off any insert on the website. Staying on the theme of Hermes, my next best purchase of 2019 is this little cute black horsey. Now this is the Rodeo PM. This is the smallest size that you can get and I know that these charms are not for everyone. They are expensive. Um, the retail price on these are 660 Australian dollars now. They were 665. They had a price decrease at the start of 2020. But yeah, I absolutely love this charm. It is a best purchase because for so, so, so many years, the Black Rodeo was so sought after. It was so hard to get. It was barely, it barely ever appeared in the boutique. And then last year, Hermes decided to do, like, bring this back and reintroduce the Black Rodeo. And they were producing it a bit more often. So it became that little bit easier to get a hold of. I wouldn't say the easiest, but that 
I would say compared to what it was, it is definitely much easier now to get than what it was before. Before, if you were to buy these in the retail, like, I'm um, sorry, in the resale market, they were selling for about $2,000 Australian. Now, because they are a little bit easier to get, they have come down in price, but they are still quite expensive because they aren't as easy as any of the other Rodeo colors. Now, to me, it's a favorite because, like I said, not only um, was it so hard to get for so many years, this is like the holy grail. If you're into the Rodeo charms, this is the holy grail color. But I just love that it's all black. It goes with all my bags as a bag charm. Um, yeah, it is just kind of like more of a sentimental piece as well because ever since I loved Hermes, I always wanted the black Rodeo, but it seemed always unattainable. So when they brought it back and started producing it more often, uh, I was finally able to get my hands on it without having to pay the premium. I paid the retail price for this. Well, I paid 665 last year's price, and I was able to get it on the online website, on the Australian online website, which is fantastic, because I had asked my store, and I waitlisted for it, and it never came about. But yeah, that is my next best purchase of 2019. Now, um, the other purchases, I'm not, they're not in any other particular order. Um, the next one is Louis Vuitton. I had a rejuvenation and love for Louis Vuitton in 2019. Louis Vuitton was the first luxury brand I ever actually got into. It is the first brand that opened my eyes to luxury and yeah, it kind of just opened a can of worms really, essentially. But I had a rejuvenation of the love this year in 2019 and it pretty much kick-started with the animation collection. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it did. Like I had bought other items from Louis Vuitton in the year, but they didn't stick, didn't end up keeping them, or had to return them due to defects, that sort of thing. But at the end of the year, they came out with this beautiful Christmas animation print, and it got me. And this is the mini pochette. If you didn't know, I'm sure you all know. The mini pochette, and it's in Damia Abi. It's got the um, Christmas animation with the Vivienne on it in Paris. And it's so cute because it's got the pink and the red car and they've got the cherry blossom tree and at the back it is just plain but yeah totally love this piece i have been using it as a catch-all my next best purchase of 2019 is another louis vuitton item and it is the louis vuitton key pouch so i'm pretty sure i yeah i'm pretty pretty certain that this was reintroduced this year in 2019 like reintroduced to my collection i'm pretty sure i bought it towards the beginning of 2019 if i'm not mistaken um i had this quite a long time ago uh probably i think this is one of my first um louis vuitton pieces that i ever owned and i think i bought one back when i was like 15 years old when i started working i saved up to buy one of these and then I just used it, really used it. The plating started to come off, it started to chip, it started to look really worn, and I decided to sell it. And I actually ended up making like a tiny bit of profit because I had owned it for so long and I sold it. I think I probably sold it maybe uh, back like five years ago or something. So I went five years without this. I couldn't believe it. I actually went five years without this piece. But then I decided to repurchase it this year and I definitely remembered why I loved it and why I used it for so long. The key pouch is actually bigger than what it used to be. I'm not quite sure when they made it slightly bigger. Maybe it was with the whole canvas change. But yeah, it's actually slightly bigger than what it used to be before. It's a little bit like kind of thicker at the sides and the canvas is slightly softer. It doesn't have that kind of glazed finish that the canvases used to have. I've got my car key fob inside. Um, I have my house alarm, which is quite chunky as well. Oops, there it goes. But anyways, um, I have my house alarm um, activator. I have all my keys inside and I have multiple doors because I have a sunroom, a back room, a front, front door, a security door, everything. So yeah, this is fantastic. It fits all that I need. I actually used it as a mini wallet for most of 2019 and I loved using it as a mini wallet. It is the absolute best. It fits so many cards and then I can fit some coins and I can fit some cash in. The coins are hard to get when you have it all in here, but I barely carry coins anyway. So I absolutely love this as a mini wallet. Highly recommend it if you really want to go super duper compact. And then my fifth one is in fact my Chanel La Posa Jumper. I really loved the cruise collection. I think it was, 20, was it 2019 cruise collection it would have been called. Um, I love this. This is from Karl Lagerfeld. This is one of his creations. And the La Porza collection really stood out to me. It just, it seemed to be kind of the starting, it really, it just felt like the starting point for Chanel getting much more modern. I pretty much 
been buying Chanel ready to wear since that and been loving it. So yes, the Chanel La Pausa jumper, I did buy it pre-loved from Vestier Collective because it is hard to get items in um, the Chanel boutiques in Sydney. It's yeah, just a matter of, you know, VIP's preference first, um, or you have to order it in advance, that kind of thing. And I'm usually late to kind of realize that I want something. But yeah, the Chanel La Pausa cashmere knitwear sweater is my fifth best purchase of 2019. I hope that this isn't cheating, but I do have an honorable mention. It is not a purchase, that's why. Um, if I had bought it, it would have been in the top five. Would I pay money for this? Yes, absolutely, I would. Um, I have on my wish list that I wanna get one in white, actually. And this was gifted to me, but it is still one of my best purchases, like not best purchases, but it is one of my best items of 2019. So um, this is the Senrev Mini Maestra bag. This is in pebbled blush. And the reason that I'm kind of giving this an honorable mention is because it has just offered me so much for my lifestyle as a mum. I have a toddler, she is three years old, and then I have a baby on the way. And I find that I'm using this when, look there, makes the appearance my child. Um, <laughs> I, oh yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yum. You want yeah. some toast? Toast. Toast. Yum. What about you? You? Yum. Yummy, yummy. Yummy, yummy toast. You want to take it away? No. No, I leave it here? Leave it here. Okay. Yeah. All right then. Okay. So, like I was saying, it is really convenient for my lifestyle because this has multiple ways of carrying it. You can carry it on the shoulder, you can carry it crossbody. I don't really like to carry it crossbody. I find it's a bit big as a crossbody bag. I much prefer to use my Senrev Aria belt bag as a crossbody bag. That I love as a crossbody bag. But this, I prefer this to wear it on the shoulder. Majority of the time I carry this on the shoulder or I change it into a backpack. And I find that it is especially handy changing it into a backpack when I'm having to push the pram. That's when I turn this into a backpack. It is so convenient. Uh, when we go to the zoo, turn this into a backpack. So this is a super convenient bag. This was gifted to me. I do have a coupon code with Senrev. My code has changed and it is now Purse on Fleek 50. It's you $50 off any purchase of $300 spend. You don't have to use the code if you don't want to. Now let's move on to my five worst purchases of 2019. And I'm just gonna start off, um, I'm not gonna put them in any particular order. Actually, probably I put the, the worst one at the end. Yeah, I'll just put the worst one at the end. But otherwise the rest of them are, are going to be in no particular order, the other four. And this is, this is not exactly a worst purchase of 2019. It is only a worst purchase of 2019 because I haven't been able to wear it. Well, two of these items. So there's actually two items I'm going to show you at once. So two of my worst purchases of 2019 are the Chanel leggings. I think was, what collection was this? I've forgotten. I've had a mind blank. Fall winter. I think this was fall winter pre-collection. Um, and then the Chanel jumper, just fall winter collection if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, from 2019. I think that's right. Um, but yeah, I haven't been able to wear them. And that's because I'm pregnant. So. I bought them knowing that I wasn't going to be able to wear them and I also bought them when I think it was spring so there was no way I was going to be able to wear them be way it was Australian springs are hot like once spring hits in some um once once spring hits in Australia um like when you get to around about the second month into spring it just gets too hot to wear any of this kind of stuff I haven't been able to get any use out of them so I've kind of just had them sitting waiting to be worn later on in 2020 uh, I did buy them pre-love but not really this was actually new if I am not mistaken I got this from Rakuten and then this one was from Vestier Collective and it was pre-loved the other items that I'm going to mention I no longer have uh, I have sold them or trying to sell them because they didn't work out for me. And the next one I'm going to mention is the Hermes Collier de Chen small model silver bracelet. Now this actually made it into, I believe, my worst luxury purchases of all time. And the main reason is actually because I bought it because I felt slightly pressured to buy it. 
because if you watch that video, my worst luxury purchases, which I will link in the description bar down below, I told you a story about how my sales associate was like, oh, I can't get the bracelet off you. I think you're just going to have to buy this, Melanie. And um, I just felt a bit pressured to buy it. Obviously, she could get the bracelet off, but it just was her tone that I sort of felt like she was kind of like, she was pushing the sale onto me. So, um, the bracelet never really was right for me from the get-go. It felt too loose on my wrist. I have very small wrists. And even though it was the smallest size available, it was still too big on my wrist. Like, it, it wasn't fitting the way I wanted it to. I kind of wanted it to hug the wrist kind of like a Cartier Love bracelet. But it didn't, so it would clang with my other bracelet that I would wear. And I didn't really like to wear it on its own because it was such a chunky silver piece. It had no bits of gold on it. So I lost some money selling that, unfortunately. I can't remember exactly, but I did talk about it in my worst purchases video. Now, the next item was a recent item that I picked up. Uh, picked it up very end of 2019. It was a part of a Christmas present from myself to myself. And it's actually the Louis Vuitton double zip pochette. So I filmed a video talking about my first impressions of this bag. I no longer have the Louis Vuitton double zip, double zip pochette. I sold it. Um, I was able to get my money back, which is great. I made a very tiny small profit only because it was the Christmas animation and it was hard to get this um, animation in Australia. It didn't work out for me because for the kind of items that I need to carry. So yeah. And then my very last, my fifth, and my very worst, worst purchase of 2019 goes to, and I'm so annoyed at myself for saying that it is this, but it is, and it's the Hermes Constance 18 in blue electric Tadillac. Don't have this bag anymore. I'm still trying to sell this bag. It is gone for consignment with Anne's Fabulous Finds, and it still hasn't sold, unfortunately. Um, I think think that the reason that it hasn't sold is Constances are not as popular as they used to be because before it was really hard to get a Constance but now it is much easier to get a Constance like they're all over the resale market plus they don't have the same appeal that the Birkin and the Kelly has so yes um, it's my worst purchase because it was very expensive and it didn't work out for me. Like, very, very, very expensive. And I'm definitely going to lose some money on it, unfortunately. And I do like the Constance 18. I really do like the Constance 18. Do I like it more than the Birkin or the Kelly? No, I don't. But I do like the Constance 18. However, what didn't work out for me with that particular bag was the colour. Do I like Blue Electric? Obviously, yes. Otherwise, I wouldn't have bought it. You know, I like the colour Blue Electric. But it was the fact that I am so in love with neutral colours, like you can see E2 Birkin, um, Kelly 25 Grey Asphalt. Oh no. Oh, daddy. Oh. Why is this in? Don't do that. Yeah. Oh, I'm scared of it. Yeah. Oh no. Looks like you got mosquito bite too. Um, of course, if I didn't like the color blue electric, I wouldn't have bought it. It was just the fact that I love neutrals. So you will see my Hermes collection is only neutrals. Will I add a color again to my collection? Yes, I will, but I have to be very, very, very sure that it's the kind of color for me. And I think I have ascertained that when it comes to pop colors, because mind you, a very dark navy blue, like this kind of navy blue of the sweater, that to me is still a neutral, it's like black. So that's a very different thing. I have no problems with navy blues, really deep blues. They, they are like blacks to me and I would wear them like a black bag. But pop colors, like those bright eye-catching candy colors, I don't think blue is the kind of candy color for me. Um, so yeah, unfortunately the Constance 18 Blue Electric Tadillac, Still for sale on Anne's Fab Fabulous Finds. It is my worst purchase of 2019 and I'm probably going to lose about maybe just under $2,000 Australian. Uh, not as bad as what I have lost before. But we have to bear in mind that when it comes to Hermes bags, um, when you're buying in the resale market, you are paying a premium for them. I bought it at the time when Constance was still fetching a premium. Now, the only Constance 18 that fetches a premium is neutral colors like gold, black, green moet, like really desirable neutrals or the very favorable pop colors like Rose Azalee, um, 
mauve sylvester rose sakura those kind of ones but now you see blue electric bamboo ver vertigo those other kind of pop colors are not fetching the same premium that they that they used to so it was really just bad timing on my part when i bought the bag so that is why i'm losing more money than i really should that is my fifth worst purchase of 2019 if you want to buy that bag it's still for sale and it's fabulous finds and it's a great fantastic deal like they are hard to get in the boutique. They aren't easy to get in the boutique of Constance 18 or any kind of small Birkin or Kelly. So it's definitely a great deal. And if you like the color blue electric, if you like pop colors, you're the kind of person that loves a color bag, then I highly recommend it. The size of the bag is fine, no problems. I have a mini Ruli and I love that bag. So it is not the size and is not the leather. I love the leather. I have a Berenia bag and that scratches like it scratches. Tatalite. I feel as though it doesn't show the scratches as much as Berenia. Maybe when Berenia patinas more, it won't. But Tadillac is shiny, so it doesn't show the scratches so easily. It's like the, the scratches, any scratches on a Tadillac bag disappear with the shine of the bag. And it can also be buffed out too. You can also buff the bag with a polishing cloth. You buff it and it comes out super shiny and then you definitely can't see the scratches. I think I've pretty much wrapped up everything. Those are my five best, my five worst of 2019. Please let me know what was your one worst 2019 luxury purchase and what was your one best 2019 luxury purchase. Let me know in the comments down below. I would love to know uh, what, was your, what was your one worst and your one best because I'm sure that we all have that if you are into luxury of course um but yes thank you very much for watching if you like this video give it a thumbs up and i will see you guys in my next one bye